Hello and welcome to Connections Forum for Relationship Expressions and Healing. This is episode 29. Our show offers single episodes and short series of talk and interviews regarding the most important areas of human life, such as relationship issues, personal expression, and self-development, and as well healing of these areas. The purpose of our show is to give you inspiration and also teach you new skills which with to handle the issues you might have with emotions. And our present mini-series is about the emotional ogre. And today our title is Love Magic, Building New Relationships with Your Emotions. So I am Margarita Crystal Lotus, a life and business mentor who helps emotionally overwhelmed women to get back into their happy state. I'm the founder of The Crystal Lotus, uh, and my website is thecrystallotus.com. Heidi is my co-host. Yeah, and I'm Heidi Hörnlein, or Adelheid Hörnlein, from The Power of Relationship. Dot com and I am a transformational coach and a relationship counselor and also a voice coach and I work with people who don't yet feel fully realized in their lives and I help them to explore their full potential and to lead a joyful and happy life. I'm also the founder of Paradiso Integrale. This is a space here in beautiful Italy where we hold retreats and courses and which is also the name of an association which is holding hangouts like that and other events. So for today's topic, everybody is talking about love and compassion and spirituality is really in and more often than not these words are lip service because normal people don't really know how to develop real love and real compassion. And this actually begins with self-love, with self-acceptance, with self-knowledge and creating a connection with oneself. And that, for to explore that, we have invited a special guest, Lucinda Winslow. Lucinda is deeply involved in the transformation work for over 16 years and she was a founding member of a spiritual foundation and a theater company which created together in collective consciousness for seven years. She is also deeply influenced by the feminine power work where we met and we will give you some, how do you say, hints, no, some title, some taste of what we have learned there and not only that. And Lucinda is um, a singer and a piano teacher and she was also a director of an opera house. And now she has dedicated her life into exploring new ways of consciousness and how to help the planet to get rid of hunger. So Lucinda, hello. Hello, Heidi. Hello, uh, Margarita. Hello. Greetings from the United States. <laughs> so good to have you here. Oh, so fun. Really exciting <laughs> medium. Hangouts. Yeah, it's an exciting new technology which we are exploring together. It's really, really fun. Yeah, and uh, welcome again to our show. Uh, and when you are joining us live, let us know who you are, where you come from, and join into the discussion with us. You can write your comments in the event page, as you probably already know. And if you are watching the replay, please don't hesitate to engage with us. We will come back to you and respond to your questions or suggestions, to your comments. So let's start for today's topic. Love magic. What do you mean? by love magic, Lucinda, and to create relationships with your emotions. What is the connection? Um, well, thank you, both of you. This is great. And uh, by the way, if you if you hear a little noise behind, of course, the farmers to, who are bringing big rocks out of the pasture have just arrived here. To, so I've got a little background noise, so I apologize. Um, so 
Love Magic, actually, the name occurred as I was considering uh, how we would engage today because it it seems to me that um, one of the basic tools that we have as human beings is actually this place in us which is found in meditation perhaps, found in many different ways, but it is the center of home inside of us and it is a deeply loving source. And one could even say perhaps it's who we truly are in our quietest and, and uh, most aligned moments. And we actually have the capacity to live our lives from that place. It's not just the great awake gurus and the enlightened ones. We all have that capacity. And its power is actually the ability to create relationship with our other selves. We're, 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 we've got you know, a whole party of, of different selves inside of us. And so the magic is how we can actually heal ourselves by creating a relationship with our uh, more troubled, more less evolved places inside of us. And so I call it love magic because it's a, it's a, it is, although it's very, there is a, a structured path that um, I used, Heidi and I learned, but um, the result brings us into a much more mature, aligned, powerful place. So, love magic. Yeah, it's true, Lucinda, because it, it seems, afterwards, it seems like, like magic, you know. Before, when uh, we are talking now about the work we are to, have done together, when it began, they said to us, you, will, you won't recognize yourself and all this stuff, you will be completely transformed and you think, oh, that sounds exaggerated, you know. And when, at, at least as my experience, when I was into the work one year, already, oh, quite a difference. After two years, I, I, I didn't recognize myself anymore. And so I realized it was not exaggerated what they promised us, you know. And it feels like magic because we often have tried to work on things and work hard and hard and hard and yeah, we came on a little more but it was not this sense of complete transformation, isn't that? Really true. Uh, I have to say that I, I started this work, I mean I've been working on myself and w on the, the path of metaphysics and self development and transformation for 20-25 years um, and but it, there were persistent things that I, I just could not seem to change and I said I was going to have to get used to it um, but I do find that in these past four years that I've been working with the feminine power work and combining it with, with uh, what I deeply know to be true um, my relationship with my husband, I've been married 32 years, but my relationship with my husband has totally changed into a really viable partnership, my relationship with my children, um, and certainly my relationship with work and uh, being able to move out into the world. I was an, you know, an opera director, you're, you're taking, you know, how about, how about me and, and uh, how about my show? And really, there's been a, a turnaround, so I feel that I'm now in the process of moving from artist to social artist, and in the process of giving back. So. But, uh, what did, do you say about this, Lucinda? Uh, when <clears throat> being coming from a theater background and, and working with actors perhaps like that, isn't it easier to work with our inner actors? Like, we have all of these actors inside, and when it comes to love, we engage some of them, but uh, what, do you, what, what do you want to say about that? Is that a good way to learn how to love better? I, um, I would say the simple answer is yes. Um, it's like being a parent. If, if you've been a parent, then you come on little children, you know when they're being rascals. 
<laughs> you know, you know all their tricks. And I certainly um, worked with some very well-known singers, divas, divos, you know, you know, who couldn't go on stage unless they had their yellow tissues to, you know, wipe their brow with, you know, and so, you know, and watching actually the deep secure insecurities um, that many opera singers uh, work with, it's, it's scary. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think actually it has to, compassion for what it is that makes us tick, what it is that triggers us. I mean, everybody has the experience of, uh, say, we're giving a lecture in a big lecture hall and we're, we've got a big resume and, and we are talking and the person right down there in the front row has a bad look on her face. And suddenly we are saying, oh my God, what did I say? Oh no. What did I, I, I shouldn't be here, I said something wrong, I have no credentials, and from going to a very mature and kind of powerful place, suddenly we go on a dime into this very small disempowered place, just because somebody maybe woke up on the wrong side of their bed, nothing to do with me. So we, we all know these, the how powerful these, what I'm going to call younger or embodied uh, emotional selves in our somatic body, they, they can run our lives and unless we know how to contain them and hold them, uh, and it's possible to learn how to reparent these, these uh, children inside of us, um, we're, we're, we're stuck. I find it so interesting that you talk, uh, that we talk here in this connection about the singers. I was a singer too, and uh, I really, you know, know how difficult it is to be with, between singers because they often, for to try to be confident in themselves, they try to diminish others, you know, and criticize others. And then, on the other hand, when I got criticized, I think, oh God, there are some people who go out like this and pff, it's no problem yeah. and they probably yeah. go on in their career and the others say oh god maybe I'm not good enough maybe I shouldn't be here and then what the effect is that you really are not good enough you know so to transport it into our inner singers <laughs> into our inner voices this is really an interesting thing so there is one voice who says you are not good enough you should shut up you know <laughs> and the other says oh, <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit more about these inner voices? Yes, um, and this is, it's actually an on, an, a develop, what we're just going to give what we're talking about here is a taste, right? But when, there's a, there's a process that, that um, we, we actually learned in Feminine Power, but is uh, actually being used by a lot of psychologists, uh, constellation family psychology, now, um, where we can, can contact, if there's something going on, there's an upset going on, really, we can, if by remembering the earliest time that we had that feeling, we can begin to get the age of that presence. And we generally have four or five young ones that run our life. I have somebody who's three, somebody who's five or six, actually, somebody who's eight. And so, et cetera. And by talking to them, actually having a conversation, first grounding in our most deep, you know, our, our wisest, deepest self. And by contacting them kindly, we can begin to learn about them. And we begin to learn that they're operating on a set of beliefs. For instance, my six year old made a belief because of circumstances that were going on, they were horrific, that she was not safe. So I am not safe becomes a very uh, strong false belief. It's false because I am safe. The greater truth is I was always safe on some level. But I'm not safe is a scary thing and it triggers emotions. Um, I'm not enough is another. Uh, and who wants to have a belief I'm not enough? It triggers all kinds of insecure feelings. But these little kids inside of us really kind of looked at the world and figured out on their own 
how things were. And it was to keep us safe, it, you know, to keep us protected in some way or another. But these beliefs don't serve us anymore. For instance, I'm not safe. Very recently, I discovered, uh, you know, if you've got a belief, you're going to prove it to yourself. You're going to keep behaving in ways that make it so. And I, I, I woke up and I said, I don't wear a seatbelt in my car when I drive. I put on makeup on the highway. I, am I, I will go into groups which are really not safe. And this all, by the way, we, we sort of live our lives to, pr uh, to prove these very ancient beliefs that are not true anyway. So part of the work is to first comfort ourselves and then to begin to undo those beliefs with greater, wiser truths that work for us now in our age. That is really cool, Lucinda. That I, I haven't heard that so well expressed before. That we're trying to put ourselves in danger. I mean, that was brilliant. Yeah, we do it very unconsciously, no? Because there is this strong drive to verify the the false beliefs which we took over when we were children. So. This is a circular, vicious circle to, to, to really to interrupt. And unless we can see it, we cannot interrupt it. So it takes some work to, to do that. But it, I think the first thing we need to do is to know how we feel, for instance. Yes. Because often we don't know how we feel. We only feel this sort of upset, whatever it is, but we are not really clear what it is. And we are not clear about the connection of, with our body, you know. The feelings are in the body. Are you aware of that? They are not in the head. I mean, the head is spinning around, yes, and the thoughts are there, but they create feelings. And I think, Lucinda, you wanted to share with us a practice to first of all discover what is going on inside of ourselves. I wonder if we should do it now immediately or do, do we want to, to go on to talk about the uh, processes you were talking about? Um, I, well, I think the first thing that just, just, you just made a, a really beautiful statement and about talking about the, the, the feelings that are, are actually embedded in our somatic body. And very often, especially you mentioned New Age and spirituality, we get aphorisms. We try to tamp down. We try not to feel these bad feelings. And therefore, we don't know them very well. Um, we're not encouraged in our culture particularly to name, be very good namers of feelings. It might be I'm mad or I'm sad. But am I despairing? Am I euphoric with happiness? We don't have a good vocabulary because we are so quick to step away. So part of this has to do with turning towards whatever is arising and giving it space. And sometimes these feelings are very big. So that's so. Uh, I, I'd say within that context, we could give it a try. Yeah, and I wanted to, to stress what we normally want when negative feelings come, we want to get rid of them and we flee them. And this is the invitation to first get to know them, to first know what is going on and not run away because whatever you run away from will tumble behind you, you know. I don't know if you know this uh, story of the skeleton man where he was fishing and he found a skeleton in the in the water and he ran away but his fishing uh, stick, I don't know how it is called, um, was in went with him and so he ran away and the skeleton blah, 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 went all the way behind him and he could only in the <laughs> moment he could uh, get rid of it when he really took the skeleton into his bed, into his arm and then it could become the wonderful young girl, as it is in the fairy tales. Wow! No, I think that's a beautiful story. Mm -hmm. So the invitation is: look at your feelings, whatever they are. Don't try to, to um, how do you say, to go somewhere else with your head, to to 
Oh, I don't find the words today. <laughs> well, to you to feel that, Heidi. So come, come with us now. Feel how it feels like when you have not found the words. <laughs> oh, it feels like in my, my throat, it's like, you know, and I'm very much out of my body, more in my head, the oh, yeah. thoughts go, and where is this word, where is this word, you should know that, you know. <sighs> yeah, so Lucinda, it. what would you suggest for uh, Heidi right now? What kind of practice do you want to show her so that she can get out of her head and come inside of her like body? It's a beautiful body, Heidi. <laughs> well, I, I'd say this is um, what a great, great uh, way to start because it's in order to begin to really find out what's going on, which is the first step of, of um, self-knowledge at this level. I'm going to invite us to actually start breathing. And if, if I can just, what I would do is I'd say invite us to close our eyes and to breathe, just be aware of the breath in the body Everybody in. should, uh, who is listening, do yes. it. I'm inviting everyone to try. If it's safe to do so, if you're driving, please do not do this. But close your eyes and to begin to be aware of the breath moving in and out of the broad body, especially past that, that voice box that may think that for some reason it should not be seen or heard into the heart, breathing it deep into the heart and as we breathe out simply letting anything go that we can, noticing any tensions in the body, continuing to breathe in and noticing anything that doesn't want to be released, it's fine. Breathing into the belly space this is encompassing the whole body with the breath and breathing out. And breathing deep, deeper into the hips. And then breathing deeper as if we could breathe down into our knees and our legs. Breathing down into the soles of our feet. And breathing out even breathing down deep into the earth which supports us, which is connected to us, and is we, if we can even breathe into each other, where we're connected from right here, Italy, United States, Canada, and wherever you are in the world, breathing together and releasing. And then, with this strong sense of body, if you can get a sense, find a place within that breathing of home where you're most safe, breathing where you're most comfortable, a sense of just being with yourself. And from that place, expanding into the room that relaxation, that beauty, that sense of your competency, your accomplishments, who you have become and who you've created as an adult in this world. And this sense of goodness that is in presence. And from that place, we now could turn to the feeling in the body. And perhaps put a hand on it if it's on your throat, if it's on your solar plexus. And from your wisest, deepest self, turn towards it and radiate a sense of love, of compassion. Oh, if you can ask how old how, what the earliest you have ever felt this? Were you five? Were you two? Were you prenatal? Were you ten? And 
and greet it and say hello. I see you, dear one. What are you feeling? Really, if you can, from your grown-up self, and this is grounded in yourself, ask this younger one, what are you feeling? See if you can hear an answer, or a color, or something. And whatever it's saying, can you say, yes, dearie, I see that. I see your feeling this. I feel sad, or I feel angry, or I feel, so yes, I see you do. Aw. Ah, and then you're going to ask again, what else are you feeling, sweetie? I'm with you. I'm here with you. I'm a grown-up now. Tell me what you're feeling. Tell me what else you're feeling. And listen. And whatever they say, mirror it back. You don't have to fix it. You can just be the space. Really be the space for this emotion in the body. I see your feeling. What the feeling. And one last time. Deary, what are you feeling? What else are you feeling? And say, yes. Ah, I get it. I see your feelings. And now, if you can ask this young self, this place in your body, what do you need? You don't have to be able to give, provide it. It's not to do with you. Just ask them, what do you need? And say, ah, yes, I get that you need a friend or you need whatever it needs. You need to be seen, you need to be heard. Ask, what else do you need, dearie? I see this. What do you need? And listen, and then mirror it back. Say yes. Give space for what this area, the self in your, in your body needs. And for a third time, say, what do you need? And say, oh, yes, I get it. I see that you need this. And if you wish to put your arms, your emotional arms around this child, this being, do it. And say, I'm here for you. I see you. You can trust that I see you. And that's then of then as you can. Come open your eyes and come back present. And that's the first part of the first step in a journey that lasts a lifetime. So Heidi. Thank you so much, Lucinda. That was beautiful. And I wanted to say also that Elena had a comment. She says, don't worry, Heidi, to find the words. Many languages, German, English, Italian. Let your soul speak. Isn't that beautiful? Thank you so much, Elena. Beautiful. That was a beautiful, beautiful um, uh, meditation. Yeah, let our souls sing. So Heidi, since, since you were with us, where, what, what do you feel now? What was the experience? The experience was when you asked, uh, what do you feel? There was a little five-year-old, maybe? And she, you know, she is very joyous, very superante in Italiano, a very, you know, she, she wants to, to, to show people what she is doing and she wants a, a attention of, of the people and she doesn't get it. And so she feels like it is a sort of disappointment 
it is sort of being heard, heard, she said, and she feels alone, let alone, abandoned. Uh -huh. That's definitely her oh. feeling, you, you know, yeah. out of the inner sense. Why, yes. why, why don't they? Why don't they listen to me? And you see how beautiful, simply to hear it, to know this, to embrace it, not try to fix it. And what did she need? Uh, wait a minute, I wanted to say, when I could see this more clearly, I felt a sort of relaxation already. You know? oh. It is uh, almost immediate, because it is an inner understanding, ah, that's it. <laughs> That's where this feeling comes from. Okay. Actually, I could see it. Your body, your you kept your body kept relaxing yeah. kept during the process. Yeah. I felt that. I felt that too. Yeah. yeah. And the need was really, you know, I wanted to sit on the table with the others and be, you know, not just there and be quiet like I do with my dog. He fortunately doesn't say anything. Like I say, you have to be quiet and I don't want to <laughs> deal with you. And I wanted to be seen. I wanted to be appreciated in my curiosity, in my aliveness. This was a big need. And a big need also to belong, you know, to, to find people who, who I could be in this way with. Isn't that what we're doing here, Heidi, with the connections? Isn't that talking to all our five-year-olds? It speaks to my five-year-old, too. I think that, that one of the interesting things is, yes, it speaks to our five-year-olds, but perhaps our five-year-olds are actually speaking for the reason that we came here. And these false beliefs are what have prevented us. Either because we behave, I mean another step is to find out how we act when we believe those things, which may not be getting us what we want. But perhaps these younger selves truly, I mean they, that to, be, to be expressed, to be in the company of our tribe, to be seen, to be heard, to bring what we authentically came here to this plane to bring, those are not the voices of the young ones, they're the voices of our soul. So our job as our mature selves is to actually bring skills to these younger ones, but actually to claim the skills for ourselves, to comfort the little ones. It's my experience they may always feel. I have a my six-year-old was abandoned as well. We can begin to evolve and talk to them and and tell them what is more truly so. But our ability when these things are arise simply to hold and contain and be our wisest selves and act in the ways we want to because that's what we came here to do. I mean and here you are Heidi with this glorious Google Hangout with this wonderful partner, Margarita, you know, and connections. It's 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 amazing, and you are acting on the. It seems like to me that you're. This is a soul mission that you're on. Absolutely. So. And without this deep work, I wouldn't have been able to do that mm -hmm. because I have a certain age. And before I said I was a singer and I did some concerts, but I never, never, never. Uh, try to, I mean, I tried, but I never succeeded to go into an opera house to, you know, because I feared to not be good yeah. enough. And I was always immediately, my emotions were overwhelming me, and I, I couldn't have done it. I would have sung horribly, I mean, <laughs> under these circumstances. And now, <laughs> in my age now, I don't fear failing anymore. I don't fear making brutta figura per Elena. No, no. What is it? Somebody will like what I do and somebody won't. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. So yeah. this is such a freedom to finally go for the purpose, the path of uh, your inner path. Right. You came here to do. 
And one part is really to do these hangouts, to bring this, what I have understood in these long years of my existence, to, to help other people to enter into these spaces too. And you see, our world right now is in, at a critical juncture. It needs everybody's authentic, empowered selves. If we are going to survive as a species, if we are going to make this shift into a place where everyone thrives, so we can no longer afford to have the world run by five-year-olds. I mean, look at the United States Congress, look at Afghanistan, look at Israel. We can't afford to do this anymore. And we're not going to spank their bottoms or send them to their room. We're going to love them. And the idea is that this love magic has huge potential if we're willing to do the work. And um, this... This is a long conversation. I've been working with this for four years and other people for 10 and 15 and 20. It's, it's a life's work, but it's powerful. It is very powerful and we invite everybody to come and watch, watch look at our websites <laughs> or at least come in contact with us. Come on a hangout with us. Tell us how the life is going on for you and what do you need and what do you feel. So my website is thepowerofrelationship.com. I'm doing coaching also via internet and we are doing retreats here with my husband. And what is yours? Uh, how can they reach you, Lucinda? Well, I have two websites. One is um, Harmony of the Spheres, Circles of Light. My main website has not gone up yet, but mainly it's to take my, my, my name and uh, at gmail.com. Uh, is, is a, my easiest way to reach me right now. Or Lucinda Winslow at HarmonyOfTheSpears.com. Yep. Good. Thank you. Margarita? I am so excited for this process you have showed us, uh, Lucinda. I, uh, I think that is so amazing that, that we can share people like you who can transmit these teachings because it is teachings of how to go through this incredibly difficult times right now. And uh, for myself, I, I have the crystallotus.com. You can come there if you like. But, I mean, I am so blessed to be in the, in the presence of, of both you and Heidi. And uh, I hope you will come back and we can do some other fun things. Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> Next Thank week, you. we will have a show. Margarita, you said you won't be here. Is it right? Yeah, I will be in Sweden. Um, I will try to get on the show, but I might not be able to. So mm -hmm. Heidi is going to run the show, um, maybe all by herself. <laughs> yeah, no, we have two guests. The title would be something about music for... to make music for personal growth and development. So consciousness work via music, so in some way it will fit uh, into what we have talked a little bit today. And our guests will be Lisa Ingalls and Kate Barbour. And we will talk about the healing powers of music in, in some ways. So please don't miss next week's Connections. And we hope, Margarita, you will be there from Sweden, from your country, home country. Yeah. So thank you for watching everybody and if you watch uh, the replay please don't hesitate to connect with us via the comments here on the event page on Google Plus or also on YouTube wherever you watch the replay. So thank you and see you next week. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you very much both.